Hello everyone. Uh, so welcome everyone to the London AI Technology Meetup. So uh, every uh, month organizing meetup uh, sessions like this. So this is a two part series uh, that is brought to you by Not AI. Uh, so in the today's session uh, that we are going to look at the Nespresso platform and the hardware aware AI model optimization. Uh, so this is a two part series that we had uh, two weeks ago, the first part. So this is the second part based on the, the Nespresso platform. Uh, the Not AI company uh, will be uh, sharing about their platform. And also uh, uh, our speaker for today is Mr. Eric Wong. He'll be uh, sharing about the uh, Nespresso platform and its uh, features. Uh, and we'll be uh, recording the session as well. And you'll be getting the uh, meetup recording in the meetup page. Uh, so uh, I will uh, hand over to Mr. Eric Wong to get started. Over to you, Mr. Eric. Yeah, um, thank you for, okay. <clears throat> oh, no, I'm the host. Yeah. Hello, everybody. Nice to meet you. Um, I'm Eric Hong, a research engineer in Nota AI. So during this session, if you have any questions or comments or any disturbance, please let me know um, as soon as possible via chat or whatever. Okay, let me share the screen first. <clears throat> Sorry. Okay. Um, so today, yeah, is everything correct? Just give me a give me a ten seconds. Okay. Um, today we are. I'm gonna talk about the. Nespresso, a platform for hardware aware AI model optimization. So I think you guys are, um, even though you are not an expert in AI, but I think, I guess, I believe that you, all of you, most of you, I guess, are a little bit, uh, at least a little bit familiar with the concepts of AI. So let me begin the story of our platform. So this is a table of contents. Um, briefly speaking, um, we have two types of solutions, first vertical solution and horizontal solution. I have introduced the vertical solutions of Nota DMS, the driver monitoring system, Nota ITS, intelligent transportation system, uh, two, two weeks ago. So if you have if you have time, you can refer to um, refer to the this video clip, which was recorded two weeks ago. Um, and today I'm going to introduce briefly a solution, a horizontal solution of Nota AI and the concepts of, of I'm going to introduce our company and concepts of how do we aware AM optimization and the model, model optimization and a few times of hands-on tutorial. <clears throat> Sorry. So let me briefly um, introduce our company. We have the Nota AI was founded in 2015. It's almost seven or eight years ago. And our clients, uh, now, now we are under Series B, in the stage of Series B. And our clients are NVIDIA, ARM, you know, DCNS, Samsung, SDS, and AWS, and so on, such a big tech companies. And now our main investors or strategic investors and financial investors. We have these investors. So mostly, most of them are from South Korea and our cumulative fund investment fund is $22.5 million. So our, as our global, global presence, we have established in as a student venture in yeah, student venture in KAIST, Korea Institute, Advanced Institute of Science and Technology in South Korea. And we have offices in Daejeon, South Korea, and Seoul. And, <clears throat> and we have also office in San Jose in the state and Berlin in Germany. And most of our engineers and engineers and developers and R&D units are in, in Korea, South Korea and a few 
uh, sales units are in the States and the Germany. So we are trying to sell, we are trying to uh, show our presence to a global scale. Even though most of our engineer, most of our members are in South Korea, um, due to the characteristic of the item, we do, what we do is a it does not we don't we don't have we don't have to care about the locations of our base. So that we want to make any we want to make a contract business to business contract as much as possible in a global scale. So our core product, core competencies are composed of these two parts. Oh, I forgot to uh, just yeah, just give me a second. Let me mute all. Yeah. So AI model optimization is what we do. So Nespresso is a solution which does the AI AI model optimization. And this is our most important characteristic. And our solution is automated software platform and optimization for small device, small edge device, edge. And due to the power of an output of Nespresso, we have, we have the output, actually out, the output of Nespresso is a AI model, small AI model, the model will be used for many industrial solutions like intelligent trans transportation system and driver monitoring system and so on. But we are now currently focusing on these two big main items. These two items, as I mentioned before, was explained in two weeks ago in the same meetup. So this in this meetup, in this session, I'm gonna introduce this Nespresso. So our team, most of our team members are about 80% of our members are R&D units. And also you, if you are, if you are, you think you are, if you think you get interested in our company, you can find our presence in LinkedIn. Search Meta AI here, and you'll find a recent post and news. Uh, recent post and news from our company, and we are, what we do. Uh, our most recent news will be published on uh, via the LinkedIn. So, if you are interested in applying as a software engineer, AM, AI ops engineer, whatever marketer, business for business units, if you are interested in any positions which is open now, you can refer to our news here. So let me, now this is the main item we have, how do we aware AI model optimization? So what is the utility of on-device AI <clears throat> is a, there are in the world, there are different environment like over the air, under the water, in the car, on the sea, they are all different environment for, they are all different environment for humans. But for the machine, machine, they are the equivalent environment. They are equivalent environment in terms of two things, first, Power supply. Second, network connection. You can guess if you are a machine, small machine, which you are flying, for example, you are drone flying over the air, you'll feel very lonely or over the air because you are you the power power electricity cannot be supplied by the power the by the power cable, and you cannot use the network cable for data transfer. Over the air, under the water, in the car, or in the sea, they are the same equivalent environment for the machines in terms of power cable, second, network connectivity. 
So the utility of on-device AI comes with these two, two reasons. On-device AI means the small device here, and they run without power cable, they run without network connectivity. All the data processing is done inside of the machine and no other network cable. And all the power, all the electricity will be supplied by the batteries. Batteries. So that's the utility of a device AI. So there are many types of new edge devices. Um, the term, literally, the definition of edge definition of edge device is edge node of the of any type of network like this. There are edge devices. And we want to give intelligence. We, we want to give intelligence a brain for the edge devices. That's what we are trying to do. So the need of how we are aware AI model optimization. Uh, usually the traditionally AI model engineers, um, AI model developers train the AI model in the server side and test for the for the test data and they pass it pass the model which was generated which was trained in the server side they pass it pass the model to the edge and they do the inference it means during the training when the model is trained in the training phase the model is not aware of the existence of edge device it makes sense, right? The model when the when the phase if the in uh, in the phase of the training, the training phase when the model is trained, it does not know um, the place. It does not know the location um, of the device. It does not know the existence of the device which the AI model will be deployed into. It means the model is optimized in the server side, and when the model is deployed on the edge, it does not mean the model is optimized for that device. So there are many, type, there are many types of edge devices, Raspberry Pi, NVIDIA series, Intel series, like something, something, blah, blah, blah. There are many types of well-known ready-made ready devices or plus and custom devices. And once the AI model exists, you should know which device it will be deployed into so that the model can be optimized more for that device. But uh, the traditional AI modeling does not care about the environment of each device. So the connection here is cut. So, yeah. So, so that's the need of hardware aware AI model optimization. So what we do, what we do informally, in formal term, hardware aware AI model optimization, which means the model, when the model is trained in the server side, it should know, the model should know which device, which device it will be deployed into after the training. So we want to make the information um, for the, um, for the model to be trained more for that device. So that we say, uh, informally, we say, we wanna make a small AI model for the small devices. When I say small, by the way, when I say small, I use this term for, uh, for you guys to understand it more easily, but it's not exact term. The small, small AI model is not an exact term. Because when I say small, um, I actually mean is a high fast latency, high, I mean the fast, fast inference speed, rather than a, um, rather than a storage. When I say small, it does not mean storage. It does not mean the size of a storage it will occupy for the hard disk. Because when I when we use the device, uh, when you use the training, uh, for example, a mobile net or ResNet, VHDNet, 
um, the size of the deep AI models will be up to several several megabytes, not the gigabytes, several several hundred, for example, 20, 200 megabytes, so on. It is not a big size, but when we come when you come when it comes to the calculation, when it comes to inference time, all these there are many parameters in the deep learning model, many parameters which consumes about 200 megabytes, for example. That's fine. We can store we can store this kind this size of um, information with um, even in the small like tip um, fingertip size USB drive hard, hard drive. But when it um, begins the inference, when it begins the um, for example, the model was trained for discriminating the cat and dog with a mobile net, which cost 200 megabytes. But um, we have to, the model have to consume a lot of time for calculating a lot of, a lot of tensor metrics or tensor multiplication in a row, and eventually it decides if the image is a cat or a dog. This will take a lot of time. So when I say small AI models or small, small devices, it does not mean the size of the storage, but it means the latency, uh, the, I mean the time complexity of the model. So what we do is uh, um, to build a lightweight deep learning deep neural network with hardware aware AI model optimization technique so that usual deep learning model is get crashed when you come to the edge device, but our solution, Nespresso, will generate lightweight deep neural net, which is which will be fit for the small device. That's what we want to do making small AI model for small devices. So there are many, um, when we want to make an AI model from the very beginning, we need to, we have a lot of challenges in the whole pipeline. For example, starting from the, starting from the business, uh, business problem, what do you want to solve? And, and we have to decide the target data identification. We have to select the models. Intelligent engineering, data cleaning, feature engineering, data labeling, and cloud architecting. And usually the AI model engineers focus on these phase with their training and evaluation. And after that, when the model is trained, model is generated in this phase, the model will be deployed into a customized for each edge device. So these large, um, we have a lot of steps to pass so that complexity matters to attain just a single AA model, which works well. There are many challenges in a row. So there are such a way, a long way to go from the data set. You have to care about the data cleansing, data labeling, pre-processing, augmentation, do something, blah, blah, AI model. And when the model is generated, we have to care about the runtime versions and runtime software and firmwares for each custom devices. We have to care about the conditions of edge device and so on, blah, blah. We have to buy the edge device, actually. There is such a long way to go. But uh, with uh, our solution, Nespresso, Nespresso, we call it NP, Nespresso. Um, you can make uh, even better in a, in a faster. You can you can make you can obtain a smaller AI model for the edge in a is much easier, more faster you know, scheme. So the Nespresso, Nespresso, which is our solution, is composed of these three sub modules: model searcher, or compressor, and model launcher. So I'm gonna explain. 
one by one in this meta. So there are, we have to, we can wrap up um, the challenges in AI model pipeline with uh, the three big categories. If you have a data set, if our clients have a data set, you might have a question of how to, how to search small model because you have a data set. And if you have a pre-trained model for some reason or uh, for some for some event, if you have a pre-trained model, you may be curious of how to compress a larger model into smaller one. So the objective of model searcher and model compressor are the same. We want a small model, small AI model. I mean, when I say small, it means a fast, faster model with low latency. So if you have a data set, you can use the model searcher to attain a small model. If you have a pre-trained model, you can use a compressor to attain the small model. So I say, I usually say the model compressor is a top-down approach and model searcher is a bottom-up approach because model searcher begins from the data set and the model compressor begins its process um, from the pre-trained model. I say um, model compressor is a top-down approach and model searcher is a bottom-up approach to obtain this small AI model. And after that, once you have an AI model, which is optimized for specific or custom device, if you wanna deploy a model and you may uh, you may um, you may curious about um, how to convert and deploy a, the model into its devices, because what what is an AI model? What is AI AI model? AI model is actually, for example, if it is a Keras eight um, TensorFlow TensorFlow model, the extension is H five, or PyTorch model, ETH, or Onyx. AI model is actually a single file. It is written in binary, which you may, you may have a header file, header and body is a single file. So we need um, we need uh, some kind of kind of translator translator for its device to interpret the content of AI model. So usually this, tr this translator is a TF light, TF light and SRT. So if you wanna deploy a model, AI model, you need to understand how to use the TF light SDK or um, TR, uh, TensorRT SDK, or if it's a custom device, you have to study you have to know the SDK, SDK, or the conditions of the software, the hardware, the, the custom hardware um, supports that will consume a lot of effort for a newbies in the AI model engineering. So if you have a deploy, if you want to deploy a model, if you have a model, small AI model, the model launcher will help you to convert the extensions of AI, extensions of extensions of uh, uh, between each extensions between TF Lite or Keras or PyTorch or Onyx and vice versa like this. The model launcher will help you to convert um, from this extension to the another one. And the second function of model launcher is a, it packs, the model launcher will pack, pack the AI model with a wheel package, wheel, which is an installation file or SO file for the users to install to, uh, to install much easier if you, even though you are a newbie in this field. So model launcher, the first function of model launcher is converting between each extensions. 
And the second function of model launcher is a deploy. It's a package. It packs. It packs AI model with the wanted. With the wanted um, installation file. For example, like a wheel or SO file, so that the AI model can be deployed in a one step manner for the inference uh, for the edge device. So the next person email pipeline will be composed of these three steps, these five steps. If you have a data set, um, if a client want to have a data set, they can load the data set into the model searcher and pass it to the model launcher for the optimized AI hardware aware AI model to inference. Inference. So second, if I have if somebody have a data set, they can they unload the data set into model searcher. And once they have a model, they can compress the model compressor. They can compress via the model compressor and pass it to the model launcher. And if our clients have a model in deployment, they can just unload the model compressor bypassing the model searcher and they can use model launcher. If we have the, if our customer have an optimized AI model, then they can just use the model launcher or you can just explore and expert, you can, you can just explore the feature, um, different features of Nespresso for fun. And you may note that um, for this, uh, each each for each scenario, they have to use they have to put their wanted target performance and target hardware specs, so that for the training phase, the net presser can refer the target device the specs of target target hardware, so that they can use the information in the training phase, so that they can have optimized hardware aware AI model. So usually our clients have these four pain points, high cost, high spec servers or cloud. If you are an AI engineer, if you are individual, or if your company um, doesn't have a GP, many PHP resources, you may suffer from the high cost and high specs of servers or cloud. And the high latency in AI models and network connective issues or personal data breaches. breaches. The Nespresso can solve these pain points um, by putting the target performance and hot target hardware at the model searcher, compressor, launcher, they will, get, they will attain optimized AI model. So our, our customers, our customers will benefit, will have the benefit of cost and they, they can have enhanced model performance with less time, less time of training. So Netpresso is a platform for finding optimal hardware aware AEM models for edge device. So this this part, this keyword is connected to the edge, edge device. So all you have to do is uh, unloading your data set and setting your target hardware and give your requirement for uh, let the Nespresso let Nespresso know your desire level of performance. Then water searcher, compressor, and launcher will do the work for you. So now this um currently we only support the classification and detection tasks and segmentation is on the construction. We are our engineers are working uh, very hard for in, to include this feature. And, but now, it, but currently, it does not support yet. Um, and after that, you can get the optimized AI model. So let's press for the cloud. Even though we, our main uh, focus is for the edge, but you can guess once you have a lightweight AI model, which will consume a lot less energy and more efficient model, then you can use them model even for the cloud. Right, it makes sense. Even with the same instance of MS Azure, 
with an espresso, it will cover um, over five times of camera channels and five times um, much faster FPS and much accurate. Um, the accuracy will, by, um, by the way, the accuracy can be dropped a little bit, but it's a trade-off. With a, um, if you consume this point on zero point one accuracy drop, you will have you will have benefit of over five times of bandwidth of data uh, data processing and much faster uh, latency with the same cost. And com by comparing the different instance, the V V100 instance is much e expensive comparing to T4 instance in Azure platform. Even with the if even with the um, even with these conditions, or then the, with the Nespresso, the camera channel bandwidth is two times wider and 14 times 14 percent faster with the small, very small, tiny aircraft drop, and they can save 85% of their cost. So we do our business uh, with an espresso for, for these two big types of services. First one is Do Yourself. We provide Nespresso um, via public. You can visit our website. You can visit the Nespresso website, and you can do you can do whatever you want. Do it yourself. If you are familiar with AI model, AI modeling, um, you can use this. But if you are like, for example, you are a software company, and what you can do is uh, making apps and apps, but you don't know about the AI modeling, you can let us know um, so that we can collaborate with you. So we can provide the professional service. Professional service will include will include the service of our engineers. We'll contact you and one to one consulting, and we can develop AI models for you. If you are not familiar with collecting data set, we can do it for you. If you are not familiar of familiar of deploying AI models for the edge, we can do it for you. So let us just let us know your requirement. So that our engineers can um, happily, we can our engineers can help you. So the Nespresso is actually a pipeline component in automatic AI optimization. This figure will illustrate; it depicts um, the whole pipeline which I have explained so far. So input and output. Nespresso is composed of these three sub modules and each module will have input and output. Model searcher, the input of model searcher is data set and output of model searcher is AI model. And the input of compressor uh, is an AI model, which is a pre-trained model actually, pre-trained model. And output of Nespresso compressor is a compressed AI model. And input of model searcher is a compressed model compressed model and output of an, um, what is launcher is a package model. If the model is packed with the installation settings, then it can be just used in the edge device. Then after that, you can use, uh, use this device with a small AI model for your, your domains. For example, our domain is a driver monitoring system, ITIS intelligent transportation system, um, both of them are um, like mobility domains, but you may have your own domain and you may have your own problem to solve. You can use our solution. Or you, you can use our solution of Nespresso for your domain if you want. So they are all connected. Um, so Nespresso, the three, the three sub modules of Nespresso can be. Uh, can be used individually or can there can be used in a family in a row. It's up to you. Um, so they're, they're called pipeline components. So we deliver in Nutan AI, we deliver value by optimizing models through MLOS pipeline deploys through model launcher. 
and by motor compressor with compressors larger motor into smaller ones. So that I told you it's a but it's a top down approach, top down approach, and the motor filter searches small motors from the bottom up approach. So it's all pipeline components. So you can read this figure. So I'm gonna explain now a motor searcher. So before that, just let me share the screen of Nespresso. So this is an Nespresso. You can visit Nespresso AI, Nespresso AI and sign in. And sign in. So you may have 500 credits if you first sign in. And you can see this motor searcher, motor searcher, motor compressor, and motor launcher, and press motor searcher. Then you'll find in the sidebar, it's a model, their simple models will be provided in the very first stage. This part is motor searcher, this part motor compressor, this part model launcher. So I I'm gonna pass this data set and they're simple data sets. If you wanted to use your own custom um, data sets, like for example, this one, echo hence data set. This data set, you may understand the, if, with the, the single feature single single image. This is my left hand, this is my right hand, this is the opponent's left right hand, this is the opponent's left hand. So this data set is it basically an object detection data set, which uh, yeah, which is composed of 40, 4,800 images. I'm gonna use a Coco, Coco format and download it. So the um, press this upload data set. And you can see the data set validator for the Windows users, Linux, or in Mac OS. Press it. Once you have the data set, they will have test, train, test, valid data set. And the Nespresso, yeah, the Nespresso mod, um, data set validator is like this. Put the path, which path of the data set train here and valid here and test here and check the data set format and just run, press the run button and you will find so maybe make a, you can make a folder of validated choose and wait for a second, a few seconds. The validator will do its work. It'll generate the, it will pack, repack. It will pack the data set for the format of zip file. Um, it is much easier for you to unload each data set and for the next presser. So, I will hand data set. The format is Coco data set and task your test case object, object detection and press train data set. Train valid test and check the certification. 
um, this, by the way, this certification file has hash code for the Nespresso to verify if the trade if the data sets are attained uh, via using using the Nespresso validator. So the file has the hash code like this for the Nespresso to verify um, the yeah, the truthness of the data, the, its data set. And this data, data.yame file has the class information and the number of data sets for each data set. So class information and unlock. Let's wait for a second. Now, once the data set is unloaded well, press the create a new project. So there are a few menus here. Uh, we can press the quick search. So I'm gonna I'm gonna run, I'm gonna train model from now on. Quick search. Okay. Search with Hegel hands data set. Okay. Quick search, Hegel hands. Just take a hint. This is object detection task. And I'm gonna use the data set of arrow hands. So this part is the information of the target device you want to deploy the AI model after the model is trained. And output format, tf light, and output data type, and inference pitch size. Currently, this is disabled for some for some reason. So the target latency, I'm going to set the target latency for 500 milliseconds. And image size, 480 by 480 in input channel. So on, and press next. And the motor searcher will automatically recommend um, the predicted um, baseline model. Um, backbone model for you. Just click one and press next. And you can start project now or even later. If you start, if you press this, start later, then the project information will be enrolled, registered in Nespresso and you, you are going to, you can start project later whenever you want later. Start project. Then the project begins and usually this, this processing will be last um, two or three hours and up to several days, but done more. So in this meetup, um, it'll consume a lot of time. So I'm, I'm not gonna, I, I, don't, I don't recommend you guys to finish the, all the processing in this time. So that, so let me use another, another one or, to show. Something else. Project. Oh yeah, they are, they are still doing on the work. So once you have finished, once you have finished the processing here, the model will be enrolled, the model trained will be enrolled in this menu here. And if the model is custom model, you can see the custom, the keyword here. If the model is trained by the Nespresso model searcher, uh, the tag will be like this, Nespresso. So click this. So this menu is for the compression. This menu is for the con model conversion. And this is for the retrain and deletion. So from now on here, I'm, then, I'm gonna use this model to compress so there are automatic compression and advanced compression. I'm gonna use the advanced compression. 
and model name test model number test the base model and there are several different compression techniques you can choose one by the print with the printing printing method and the filter decomposition method check one and select method and alphabets test model And you will see the profile of the model selected, and you will see, and you will see the um, specific profile of each layer, each layer in the neural network. So the target device is Raspberry Pi 4B. You can um, put the pruning ratio in here. If you are not familiar with these kind of things, you can just use the recommendation. Then let's press will automatically recommend you the printing ratio for each layer. And press compress. Then you'll see the you will obtain the compressed compressed model within just a few seconds to a few minutes. So if you like this result, that's fine. But if you don't like the result, you can come back to the previous step and do the compression again. And after that, you may want to do retraining. Compressed model needs to be retrained to recover the accuracy. They may have, they because they cut out the unimportant weights for the compression, they may, they may the model, compressed model, will suffer, may, they may suffer from small accuracy ACC drop, ACC drop. So usually the retraining will ca they can recover the accuracy drop. So I recommend you to do to the retraining, retrain. And do the work like, like data set and press next and press the server like this. And this is a retraining uh, project. After the journey, retraining is done, you'll find the model here. After it's retrained, you can download the model or you can, you can, you can move your, you can move your model to converting. Now it comes to the model launcher. Now it's a model launcher. Convert AI model, the baseline here to another platform. So press, that, that's all you can do. That, that's all you do for model converting. It's very easy. So after converting, you can use the packaging here. And press the base, base model. And this format Python Hill or Linux SO. And you can put the pre-processing and post-processing code here. And after that, you can obtain WHL Hill file. And you can install the Hill file in your device. If you use the JSON device, if you have, um, uh, because it is NVIDIA model TRT, if you want to use a, this model in the JSON Nano, you can install this fill file in your device and run this uh, simple line, a uh, few lines of code to see the result, the very first result. So this is all, this is a brief overview and hands-on I have. So let me, sh let me briefly wrap up the contents which I have explained. So the model searcher provides developers with optimal model based on user needs and requirements. The input of model searcher is a data set and output of model searcher is optimized small. When I say small, it means a faster, fast AI model. And model searcher, the characteristic of model searcher is it, it covers various search options and is hardware aware of model training and reduces development time 
and it's the easiest time to build models to input like this an output or like this so you can use the customized options accuracy first or you can set your priority if you want accuracy you can, you can choose this option you can if you want a latency you can choose this option in the model searcher like this the latency um the map trade-off like this if you want higher latency which means slower model then the map will get um, increased if you want to fast if you want fast model the map will drop down this is trade-off trade-off figure So in the model searcher, it's a our engine, the model searcher engine is actually based on the neural architecture search with a multi-objective neural architecture search. So what is architecture neural architecture search? Neural architecture search is actually um, basically the same with the ResNet, VGNet, ImageNet, AlexNet. They are the same result of neural architecture search. But one thing is different. Um, the neural architecture this ResNet model, which was developed, invented by the, uh, some researchers, they find, they search this architecture, which is well um, ordered architecture. But when it comes to the automatic neural architecture search, the skip connection will be like this in the very complicated manner. The human engineer cannot um, cannot dream, cannot even dream of finding this kind of uh, very complex graph. But the automatic architecture search, the usual result of the um, automatic neural architecture search engine is like this. That's what motor search do. That's what motor searcher does. So the output of motor searcher. Um, this is a multi real time people diffraction just nano. You can see uh, with a single just nano device and one camera. Uh, we have three cameras with one device and they're connected device. So FPS 13, 13, 13 FPS. So three, three models run simultaneously in the small single device with the um with the manner of um enough speed for the users so that's the output this is the output of motor searcher so it's a motor compressor the input of motor, of motor compressor is ai motor pre-trained pre-trained AI model and output is a compressed AI model. A compressor is a ready to use compressor toolkit. It supports all CNN architectures with CON2D layer. So every computer vision model, since every computer vision model contains a CON2D layer, which has a lot of parameters comparing to some other layers like patch normalization or other custom layers we only touches the compressor only touches come to the layers so that we can say we can cover all the computer vision models because we only touches to come to come to the layers it supports all CNN architectures and it op optimal compression ratio it gives you optimal compression ratio and it eliminates months of paper implemented period so this means the compressor is actually for the researchers, researchers for their experiment. So it can redu reduce the minimal loss of information. So motor compressor, we, put, we support PyTorch and TensorFlow cameras and input pre-trained AI model and output compressed AI model. And inside of the motor compressor, they have a structured turning and filter decomposition as their, uh, as their compression method. So this is a bird view of motor compressor. Step zero, uh, step O, they collect data set. Step one, they train a large model with the data set. Step two, we compress, we compress 
the larger model into a smaller one. And step three, we deploy the complex model into a small device. Step four, make, device, make decision. Make decision via the camera. And step five, apply to various domains. In this loop, what a compressor is this part, like this. So, yeah. So this is a result table of what a compressor of classification with the Cypher 100 data set, the TensorFlow CAS model. And we can cover the object detection task with Pascal VLC data set, the model launcher. So the characteristic of model launcher is that for, for faster um, model acceleration and it covers various converting options and benchmarks on actual hardware and it's ready to use deploy packaging. So this part, once the Nespresso generates, the model searcher generates an AI model, it broadcasts the model into different devices and the information of the inference speed and accuracy will come back as a feedback loop and the model launcher, model searcher will do their work. Like this, uh, let me skip this scenario. So, so I just show the hands-on tutorial. So um, let me share. This is the last option. It's R2. Oh, in the, in the functions fine. So it's already in an hour. So let me know if you have any questions so far or comments. Yeah, I think I have to skip this because this is not working in fast manner. We have to wait for several minutes, I guess to be completed. So let me skip this part. Um, if you have any more, um, you can, you can uh, just let me know this. If you have used the Nespresso, the original, you have, then you will have the original model and compressed model. Then you can visit the site, website Netron here. And you can compare each model after, before and after the compression. You see every other every other figure are every other um, settings are the same, but only this part is different different before compression, after the compression. Before compression, the number of parameters are here two five is two fifty six, but after the compression it's a two fifty four like this. You cannot, you can have this figure by using the model compressor. Compress and select the inferring method. Like this and give Spring ratio for just one layer, then you will obtain you will obtain this kind of um, layer wise layer wise uh, model compression. So then you can use the Netron. You can see the result in your hands. So this is the this is all I have to um, so far today. So do you have any questions and comments? Please let me know.
If you're not, I'm gonna um, I'm gonna pass the mic to the host. Thank you, everyone. Uh, so, if you have any more questions, uh, you can write to uh, Not AI uh, for Eric Kwan. Um, and then thank you all for joining the today's session as well. And uh, this session will be uh, recorded, so we'll be sharing the uh, meeting link uh, due time, uh, so you can uh, get the video recording of the uh, session as well. And I would like to thank Not AI uh, for uh, delivering these two uh, valuable sessions uh, today about Expresso platform. And looking forward to uh, more sessions like this. And uh, do keep us uh, in tune for our meetup uh, group where we bring a lot of uh, interesting uh, topics uh, every month uh, uh, in our meetup channel. Uh, so thank you everyone for joining uh, for today's meetup. Uh, have a good day and looking forward to seeing you again. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for your time. And thank you. Thank you for Rudy Han. Thank you. Thank you.